Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Encounter with God Together, a weekly audio and video podcast where we review the readings in our Encounter with God daily Bible reading guide. And each week I welcome a guest. And today I'm really happy to have with me Skylar Brown. Uh, Skylar's part of my team as a digital media assistant for Scripture Union USA. He's also a volunteer, and uh, he also is doing his doctorate in, remind me again, Skylar. Strategic leadership. Strategic leadership. So here's your future world. And uh, we're glad to have you here, Skylar. And and thanks so much for for joining. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm going to pray for you and then we'll get going. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Father, I thank you for Skylar. I thank you uh, for his heart for you, for his love for you, and for his desire to serve you in uh, all of the many ways that he is at work um, in his home and his school and in his uh, work. And Father, thank you that he's willing to share today. I pray that you bless him and encourage him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're continuing on in 2 Samuel, where we see David as a very complex character, man after yeah. God's own heart, who has clearly got some foibles. So many things happening. Yep. He's a man after God's own heart, but uh, it doesn't look like it at all times. <laughs> so there's <laughs> definitely some things he has to work on. We all have to work on, really. So uh, today's reading, uh, today is Sunday. So if you're watching this uh, tomorrow now, which is Monday uh, for you, then you would already have read this, but it's Psalm 64. Uh, and this is an amazing Psalm. It's one of David's lament Psalms, but he constantly asks throughout the song, why do the wicked prosper? Uh, why are they uh, having success? And the answer is in verses seven through 10 because their success is only temporary. So Psalm 64, I'm just going to read verses 7 through 10. Mm -hmm. says, But God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. All people will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. All the upright in heart will glorify glory in him. Amen. So uh, yeah, we're going to see arrows today. We're going to see striking down uh, today. There is a lot of uh, violence and some gore even in these chapters. Uh, and also uh, this will give away uh, a lot of the content. So if you want to read 2 Samuel 18 through 22 first, you can read that. Uh, and then this will give a lot of that away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. So uh and really that question at the end of today's give voice to any complaint against God. Uh, at the end of the EWG, every page says the apply section. So we give our complaints to God um, and reflect on uh, what we know of God, mm. which he is a good God. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So 2 Samuel 18, the first chapter of second, uh, this passage here for this uh, week we first have the context of David's firstborn, Amnon, raping his half-sister, Tamar, uh, who David had with a different wife. So David didn't want to kill Amnon because he was his firstborn. So Absalom does the task of killing Amnon, and now he tries to steal David's throne. So this is where chapter 18 starts. Yeah. So we see in chapter 18 that he divides his army, David does, into three leaders to fight Israel, which is really, it's led by Absalom right now. So David fighting against his own son uh, in the forest of Ephraim, which is what I have in my background right here. I pulled it off of Google Images. That's very so, clever. Thank you. So it's Joab, <laughs> uh, and we're going to see a lot about Joab and the kind of leader he is, Abishai and Ittai the Gittite. So David really wants to join this battle as well. He says, like, I'll go fight and they're like, no, you're the king. You shouldn't fight. Uh, and we'll see this happen a lot. They're going to keep saying, no, David, you know, like, I, we love your passion, but you have to stay home. We don't want you getting killed. So he says, okay, I'll, I'll stay. Have a good fight. But take care of Absalom. Like, don't kill him, but you can kill anybody else in his army. So David's army wins against Absalom's army. Uh, casualties are 20,000, we see. 
Um, and now here's where the bad part happens to Absalom. So while fighting, Absalom's on his mule and uh, David's army uh, passes by him. Um, he gets a really bad hair day happening here. His hair gets <laughs> caught. <laughs> and, and I can't imagine what this would look like. But like, if you see the trees behind me, imagine Absalom's hair getting caught to one of the trees and the mule just keeps going. And he's like, wait, I'm stuck. And it's like, he can't do anything. But the soldiers don't kill him because David said, kill anybody but Absalom. Take care of him. Uh, he's just a little kid. He's my son. Um, and so now uh, Joab, which is the character I said, uh, he's leading one third of the army. He has a strong character. He's saying, what's wrong? Like, this was your big break. This was a, your chance to kill Absalom. And they won't do it. They won't even do it for any bribe or any kind of money, which I find to be amazing. They're really loyal to David. So uh, Joab can't stand this anymore. So he kills Absalom himself with three javelins, which are like spears. So they're like the arrows that were mentioned in the psalm we read at the beginning. And if that wasn't enough, uh, 10 of Joab's armor bearers strike Absalom as well. So he is definitely dead. Uh, if they had any doubts that he was dead. Seemed a little um, over over the top. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely excessive. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, they got to make sure that he had died. <laughs> so he died. Um, and now here's a really interesting part is now uh, the war was a success. Uh, King David won the fight. But at the same time, we know what happened to Absalom. David doesn't know yet. So Ahimaaz. Really, Ahimaaz, I believe is how you say it, uh, he wanted to tell David the good news. He's saying, King David, you know, he wanted to run to David and say, we won the fight. But Joab's saying, now hold on, Ahimaaz, you can't do that. Um, David is crying. It would be the equivalent of, you know, uh, if you... Uh, really had a bad day like you were playing video games a lot and uh your mom uh told you oh no you have to do your room <laughs> and you're just uh you just really want to keep playing video games um and then all of a sudden uh because you didn't clean your room um something uh happens in your room that's like uh maybe you know there's so much mess on the floor and uh your mom almost trips on something and she says hey you know like i told you to clean your room Maybe now is not the best time to say, uh, hey, by the way, um, I'm really interested in this game. Uh, can, can we go to the store to get it? Uh, like Joab's saying, Ahimaaz, do not tell David the good news. He is He's wondering what's happened to Absalom, if he's okay. So Joab said, let's send a Cushite instead. Uh, say, King David, your son's dead. Um, but Ahimaaz really wants to go to David. So they both end up going. Um, and Ahimaaz first says the good news, uh, we won the fight. David's like, is Absalom okay? The Kushite comes to David, um, also wants to say good news, doesn't want to just go ahead and say, you know, hey, your son died. <laughs> so he says good news as well, you know, good news, you won the fight. Uh, David's saying, well, what about Absalom? He finds out that Absalom died. The Kushite revealed the news. Mm. Yep. So now we're on chapter 19. David cries a lot. Uh, David does not feel happy. And really, uh, in this EWG, as we're looking at the page in the applied section, it talks about personal grief and how that can be very difficult. In this passage, uh, David's grieving a lot over Absalom. And it's not like they had like an amazing relationship like he and Absalom didn't even get along as father and son uh and now uh the soldiers won the battle uh, Joab's saying come on David pull it together like you, you gotta tell your soldiers well done otherwise you know they're just not gonna you know be with you anymore so David goes and uh he tells them well done and now that Absalom's dead David really has to be a king the problem is that people liked Absalom, and so David has this brilliant strategic move, and I'm learning uh, strategic leadership in my doctorate right now. Uh, so David sees that the people are upset. He says, don't worry, I'm going to put Amasa in command of the army, and as the people know, Amasa was Absalom's commander, so 
you'll like him. So that was brilliant because now the people are going to, you know, go fighting after David or like, you know, uh, start, um, you know, <laughs> uh, trying to uh, take him over. So that was a brilliant move. And Shimmy says, um, you know, by the way, sorry for cursing you earlier, David. He was cursing David and um, Abishai was saying, you know, kill Shimmy, David. Like he was cursing you earlier, but David says no. So uh, there is a lot of conflict. There's disagreement. Uh, and even towards the end here, we have a lot of different negotiations happening. Um, Mephibosheth is a very interesting component of this passage because David thinks that he was a traitor. And so he didn't join David in the battles or anything. Um, he's saying, Mephibosheth, why didn't you go with me? Uh, you traitor. And Mephibosheth is not a traitor. He actually is lame, so he can't walk. And so he was saying, my servant, my servant Ziba betrayed me. Um, so without Ziba, I couldn't move very well, you know. Um, he's like, okay. So he understands the situation now. He's saying, you guys can split the land. Mephibosheth says, oh, Ziba can have it. I'm just so glad you're safe. Uh, there's other negotiations as well, like Barzillai. Um, oh, yeah, Barzillai, David says, you help me cross the Jordan. Like, let me provide for you as well. And Barzillai, of course, is very nice and uh, says, oh, thanks, David. Like, here's a servant for you as well. So, um Eventually, what happens is David conquers Judah. Israel is saying, wait, like, that's our king. <laughs> Judah's saying, no, it's ours. It's Judah. <laughs> Judah wins in the end. <laughs> Which is going to be interesting um, because there is something going on with um, David's concubines. Okay, we can see in, now we're in chapter 20, um, 20, 21, and 22. I'll just go through this quick, is that Absalom, uh, the rebellion ends there, of course, because Absalom um, is no longer and uh, David's pleased the people. There's this person named Sheba, and he's a scoundrel. He's going to try to start a new rebellion. Israel says yes. Judah says no. We're with David. So Judah's loyal to David. Um, and that's how the win happens as well. So David provides shelter for Absalom's concubines as well, which... Um, the EWG uh, asks the question, is this a good decision or is this a bad? So it's all about decisions and encounter with God. And so we're wondering, uh, is that a good decision? Uh, like, is he trying to provide shelter for these women? Um, or, you know, does he have any bad intent with that? And we'll see the good and bad uh, as we go along here, uh, this balance here. So Amasa um, who is the commander right now, now, and he was Absalom's commander. Um, like David's saying, Amasa, you have to go deal with Sheba um, so that this rebellion doesn't happen. Amasa says, okay, uh, but there's no response. So David has to get somebody else called Abishai. He says, you go with your men to attack Sheba. Uh, Joab says, Abishai, let's go. But, you know, before we attack Sheba, we have to kill Amasa first. Um, there were some relations there. So he had to kill Amasa first, and then he could kill Sheba. So uh, Joab pretends he is about to meet Amasa, like, you know, saying hi and gives him a kiss, but it, he actually kills him. So <laughs> very um, violent and a lot of gore <laughs> in these chapters. Um, they hide the body. Uh, Really uh, secretly, quick move. Uh, now let's go get Sheba. Uh, they find Sheba in a city called Abel. A woman goes up to Joab and says, um, "You know, this is a peaceful city. Like, don't I don't we don't want violence here. What do you want?" Um, Joab said, "Well, we want Sheba dead." <laughs> and she's saying, "Okay, let like let's let's keep this calm and like let's get this over with because we don't like violence here." And so Sheba dies very uh, discreetly. <laughs> and now. Joab is the new Amasa. Uh, so, so much for that people pleasing, you know, brilliant move that David made earlier. It's now not even anymore because Amasa is no longer uh, the commander. It's now Joab. So, yeah. is that a good decision or is that a bad? This is the repeating um, that's happening mm -hmm. over here. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. I, we can't know 
people's intent. We can try to see people's intent based on, you know, what they're doing, but really, I, I don't know. Um, what we know right now, though, in beginning of 21, um, there's a three-year famine in Israel. Uh, David's saying, why, God, you know, why is this famine happening? Uh, we need food. And God is saying, because Saul killed the Gibeonites, that's why you're not having food right now. He was supposed to be nice to the Gibeonites, not to kill them. Um, so that was the agreement. So David goes up to the Gibeonites. We need food. Like, how can I make this right with God? How can we get this famine to end? Um, the Gibeonites say, well, you know, we don't want money, but we'd like to kill seven of Saul's sons ourselves. Um, not just have them dead. We want to enjoy killing them. And so uh, I don't know, uh, Gail, is this justice? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's very confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really enjoy that. I wouldn't call that a picnic uh, yeah. you know, taking seven of Saul's sons and killing them, but maybe they would because Saul killed the Gibeonites. So this is their way of making it right. So yeah. justice or abuse. Uh, and David says, okay, fine. But the seven men uh, I'm going to choose uh, can't be Mephibosheth because his father, John and I were friends and uh, we know that John and David were friends. So the Gibeonites are happy with the seven men that David let them have to themselves, uh, kill themselves as their picnic. And so <laughs> Saul's <laughs> concubine, um, and, it's, and she's mourning. She's like, the, two of these seven are my sons. Uh, she's mourning. She's having a hard time dealing with this. The animals are trying to come and eat the carcasses. She's like, no, 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 go away. Like, these are my sons. I'm still mourning. Um David feels bad. He takes Saul and John's bones uh, to lie with them, saying, okay, all these bones are going to be buried together. Um, God is pleased. The famine is now over, um, thankfully, because they needed food. Um, and now this is where David says, we shall fight the Philistines, except he's saying that as he's about to go to sleep because he's so tired. Um, and I've been really tired before where I just – wanted to either get so much schoolwork done or say, you know, I'm going to make um, an amazing uh, job at whatever I need to do and then just fall asleep. So that's what happened to David. Uh, the Philish, Philistine giant, his name is Ishbibinob. He says, I will kill David. And he's very intent on killing David. Abishai says, no, you won't. And he kills Ishbibinob instead. So no no giant Philistine killing David, thankfully. But David's troops are saying again, this is a repeated theme. David, we know you want to fight with us, but you were just about to fall asleep just now. Why don't you get yourself some rest before you get killed? We're going to kill a bunch of Philistines right now. It'll be okay. Uh, we got this. So, um, I'm so glad David got some rest because uh, he's one of those leaders that like won't sleep and will keep on going. Uh, and it's amazing. We see a lot of leaders in our world. I couldn't imagine just like keeping on fighting. I saw in the sight and sound play and it was really amazing. And just David keeping on fighting um, all of these, you know, trying to fight the Philistines, fighting every single army around him and then getting so tired. And so it was amazing to see that visual uh, mm. on the stage. It was so great. That um, is. Yeah. And also the Goliath as well. So there's a different Goliath called Goliath the Gittite. And he is killed by Elhanan. Uh, but then, of course, we know that there was a Goliath uh, who was also a Philistine, uh, but who was the Goliath that David killed with a slingshot. So this is a different one. Uh, and it's amazing to see those on stage. If you ever get the chance to see a sight and sound, uh, they're just such huge giants on the stage. <laughs> it's cool how they do that. Wow. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah. And so uh, then there are some others like uh, Sibikai, uh, the Hushathite, uh, kills one named Saf. And then David's nephew, nephew John, kills a giant. And this giant has like six fingers uh, on each of his hands and six 
toes on each of his feet. So again, I have no idea what that would have looked like, but um, it's an amazing visual the Bible gives us so that we can actually just imagine these words, what that would have looked like. I would have been scared if I saw a giant like six, six fingers and he's just like going like that with his fist. Uh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So wow, now, well, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, 2 Samuel 22. This is where it ends. If this sounds familiar, it is. It is Psalm 18. You'll see the same as well in Psalm 18. And really, God is uh, thanked in this passage. David is saying, thank you, God. And so that ties us full circle. Uh, really, that's how we started. It's Psalm 64. Uh, why do the wicked prosper? Because their success is only temporary. God, thank you for shooting my enemies with arrows, but it is because of him uh, that I have success, not my own success. That's good. Yeah, David's posture toward God is always, uh, always seems right. You know, no matter what he's doing that is a bad decision or a, yeah. a, a sin or whatever, his, his, he, he seems to know who he is before God. And that's uh, absolutely that's in the end, his heart is right with God. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you've just done a wonderful job of taking us through these scenes and uh, with all the various players. Thank you. Are not uh, all that common. So I know it was jam packed. There's just so much in all of these passages. It was, it was jam packed. And I uh, you know, appreciate the run through there. And it really is drama filled. And it's hard to get that when you're reading, you know, just the words every day and trying to figure out why any of this is even happening, you know. Um, yeah. So, sure. so thank you, Skylar. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah. Could you pray for us this week and those who will be reading it and, and uh, imagining themselves? Yes, absolutely. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God who vindicates. You're the God who protects us, who defends us. I thank you for David and for this example and how uh, Gail and I could be on this call uh, with all the viewers and listeners out there. I pray, dear God, that you would please touch each and every one of our hearts and minds as we delve into these passages. Please help us to see your love and your call to action, what we should do. Uh, we thank you for the decisions that David made and even we see that the ones that weren't so great, uh, that in the end, his heart was right with you. And so may our hearts be right with you. Mm. Bless us now and this week. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. You have a wonderful week. And if you're not already reading, uh, you can subscribe either by email or read online or have the quarterly book yourself uh, come on our website at uh, scriptureunion.org. All right, Skylar, you have a great week. Thank you. You too. And you bye too, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.